For as long as there's been crime, there have been criminals bragging about those crimes. Smartphones record our daily lives, and some of our daily lives include a whole bunch of criming. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Illegal Eagle. Today I stole 50K of Bitcoin and used it to hire a hitman because it's fun. This is why you should take legal advice from a YouTuber. Remember to like and subscribe and always brag about your crimes online and to the police. And I can't remember who said it, but it's a strange coincidence that as soon as we all had video cameras in our own pockets 24 seven, ghosts disappeared, aliens stopped visiting and police started shooting unarmed people. But while the phones may be smart, the criminals are still really dumb. So today we're gonna cover some of the most stunning instances where criminals might just have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling smartphones. Now, selfies are not just about making dumb faces with the dream of gaining Instagram influence. Selfies also have helped bring dumb criminals to justice, like 19 year old Albert Wilson, who stole a phone, took a selfie, and then tattled on himself by accidentally emailing his own photo to the victim. And here's how it all went down. One fateful Saturday night in 2013, Albert Wilson and five accomplices surrounded a 16 year old boy in the Bronx, ordering the victim to empty his pockets. Wilson proceeded to grab the teen's Samsung Galaxy S Epic smartphone before fleeing with his fellow thieves. But the mystery of who stole the teen's phone would not last very long because shortly after the robbery, Wilson could not help but test the photographic quality of the Samsung Galaxy by snapping his selfie. But honestly, that's not surprising. Hey Renee, how good was the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S's camera. Well, Devin, Samsung is actually the perfect camera for recording your crimes. Unlike Google, which focuses its massive AI powers on computational photography, or Apple, which tries to do a little bit of both, Samsung has just always been all in on sheer optical girth. Just massive and multiple lenses grafted front and back with conveniently pre-crushed blacks. That's a color correction term. And auto-boosted sat for all your ready to social criming needs. There you have it criminals, if you're going to crime, you definitely use a Samsung. But what Wilson did not know, the phone was set to automatically upload all photographs to the teen victim's email account. And with a literal photo ID of the teen attacker in his inbox, well, the victim immediately took that selfie to the police. Wilson was swiftly arrested and charged with robbery, possession of stolen property, and a controlled substance believed to be crack cocaine. Oh, oh I'm oh, sorry, oh, oh. did you get addicted to crack? Did somebody get addicted to crack? Oh. So thanks to Wilson's selfie, justice was served. Now. I know that this is the least important part of the story, but I have to remark that Wilson has an absolutely terrible selfie game. I mean, just look at this travesty. I mean, the photo is hazy, you can see the phone's reflection in the glasses, and you know, why are you wearing headphones? So honestly, uh, six out of 10, though bonus points for taking a photo in front of a sign that says, arrest. Anyway, our next criminal might be even dumber because he posts a photo of himself siphoning gas out of a cop car. Now, when it comes to uh, dealing with high gas prices, there are many ways to lessen the pain of the pump. Some opt to take public transit. Others have elected to switch to electric or hybrid vehicles. Uh, but one Kentucky man decided to engage in his own amateur oil exploration by siphoning gas directly from a police officer's car and then brag about his crime on Facebook. And I'm sure that you can guess exactly how that turned out. So in 2012, a 20 year old Kentucky resident, Michael Baker and his girlfriend stumbled upon an unattended Jenkins police vehicle and seizing the opportunity for some free fuel, Baker proceeded to siphon gas from the squad car. And he might've gotten away with it, except Baker couldn't resist the urge to have his girlfriend snap a photo that showed him not only stealing gas, but also flipping the bird. And then he memorialized it by posting it to Facebook. Now, there's the old proverb that goes, pride cometh before the fall, and uh, also only idiots post to Facebook. But this cocky Kentuckian was done in by his own vanity. After bragging about his crimes on Facebook, the county issued a warrant for Baker's arrest. One month later, Baker was taken into custody and charged with misdemeanor theft. Well, he was just standing there and I thought it'd be funny to take a picture and didn't post it on Facebook. Yeah, we're sorry, it was just a joke. I mean, if we was gonna steal gas, we wouldn't put it nationwide on Facebook. I mean, we don't steal anyway, but. And although the siphoning photo was removed from his Facebook page, Baker managed to keep his 380 friends apprised of his latest legal problems. Quote, just got out of jail, he wrote in one post. And in another post he wrote, quote, yeah, lol, I went to jail over Facebook. And in response to a friend who had not seen the image before it was removed, Baker assured, quote, yeah, lol, you just have to seen it. It was funny as hell though. So, I, I mean, do you apologize to the cops for it? 
And then moving one state over, we have the Tennessee man who attached an Apple Watch to his girlfriend's car in order to try to stalk her. Now, uh, Apple markets the Apple Watch as, quote, the ultimate choice for a healthy life. Now, the Apple Watch boasts a variety of health and safety features for its users. The Apple Watch can track your heart rate, track your workouts, can even be used with AirTags to track items you might have misplaced. Items like your girlfriend. Yeah, unfortunately, a Nashville man decided to use the Apple Watch for nefarious purposes, to track his girlfriend's every move and stalk her with the watch's location technology. Now, thankfully, police were able to intervene before anything dire happened. According to the March 2022 affidavit, Welch's girlfriend visited the Family Service Center, a domestic violence shelter, to seek a restraining order against him. Now, police officers were summoned to the Family Safety Center after security informed them of Welch's presence. But remember, tracking goes both ways. When the police inspected the victim's car, they found an Apple Watch attached to the spokes of the car's wheel. And uh, they were able to link that to the person who was trying to track her. But funny story, this is actually very similar to how I keep track of Renee Ritchie at all times. I've been using an Apple Watch all day, every day. But then there's the Ohio man who sent in a selfie of himself to police to replace the terrible mugshot that they took of him. These friggin' people. Anyway, you know, when most people get a bad picture, whether it's on a driver's license or for a school photo, you know, they just take the loss and hope for a better picture the next time around. But Ohio man Donald Chip Pugh learned the hard way that when you're on the run from the law, maybe that's not the best time to contact the police to complain about your mugshot. Pablo didn't know it then, but this mugshot was gonna cause him a lot of grief down the line unless your goal is to assist the police with your capture, which of course is exactly what happened in this particular case. In 2016, Pew was scheduled to appear in court for a pending DUI charge in Lima, Ohio. And when Pew skipped his hearing, local police posted a mugshot on Facebook to solicit the public's help in tracking him down. Quote, Mr. Pew is also currently a person of interest in several other cases, including for arson and vandalism. Now, Pew saw his mugshot and was furious not that the police were trying to track him down or that he committed multiple crimes, Times, but that his picture had failed to capture his good side. So Pew took the initiative, dressed himself up in a houndstooth pattern suit, not unlike the one that I'm wearing right now, put on some sunglasses and texted the police, here's a better photo, that one is terrible, with an accompanying selfie. Now, Pew was no stranger to the Lima Police Department, having had previous run-ins that included charges of disorderly conduct, breaking and entering, and domestic violence. But this was the first time that Pew had ever reached out to the police while they had an active arrest warrant for his arrest. Now, the Lima police uh, honored Pew's request, uploading his new mugshot to Facebook and writing, quote, we thank him for being helpful, but now we would appreciate it if he would come speak to us at the LPD about his charges. Now, a smart criminal might lay low to avoid drawing attention to themselves, but this video is not about smart criminals. And as it turns out, Pew was not done talking about what he considered to be a grave injustice of an unflattering photo. So after Pew's mugshot and selfie began circulating on the internet, he decided to call into Lima's classic rock station, 104.9 The Eagle, to tell his side of the story. Now, the local station spoke to Pew for its Idiot of the Day segment. And as it turns out, Pew had the honor of being the first idiot to ever be interviewed on air. Where are you at again, Chip? Right now? Yeah. Actually, I'm sitting in a bunker right next to Chapo Guzman. We're trying to dig a tunnel and get to McDonald's. But sadly, Pew's run from the law did not last very long. The next morning, Pew was arrested 800 miles away in Century, Florida. Because at heart, we all knew that this Ohio man was really a Florida man. In Ohio, northern Florida, I mean, let's be honest, they're really like angling for that Weird stuff happens here. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a happy ending to this story. When Pew was arrested in Florida, he got to take his mugshot over again. Though I have to admit, I don't think that that's much of an improvement over his first one. Now, sometimes criminals are incredibly stupid, but sometimes the police are just really, really smart. And such was the case when the FBI actually created a fake messaging app and then got a whole bunch of criminals to use the fake encrypted messaging app. Because most of the cases we've talked about today involve criminals using smartphones to tell on themselves. But when it comes to the more savvy criminals who are actually trying not to get caught committing crimes, these folks often turn to encrypted messaging to cover their tracks and shield their communications from the prying eyes of law enforcement. That's because when messages are encrypted, it's nearly impossible for law enforcement to learn what criminal groups are doing. So when faced with encrypted messaging, what is law enforcement to do? Well, 
simple. Develop their own fake encrypted messaging app, trick criminal organizations into downloading the fake app and wait for the incriminating evidence to just roll in. And that was the work of what was known as Operation Trojan Shield, a successful multi-year electronic sting operation led by the FBI in conjunction with the DEA, uh, Europol, the European Police Agency, and law enforcement groups from 16 other countries. Because in 2018, the FBI and its international partners shut down Phantom Secure, a Canadian-based company that provided secure communications to high-level drug traffickers and other criminal organizations. The company would purchase smartphones, wipe them clean of all traditional functions like texting, internet, and GPS, and then it installed encrypted email systems that uh, could only communicate with other Phantom Secure phones. And if a customer was arrested, Phantom Secure would destroy all data on the phone. Now, after the feds shut down Phantom Secure, the CEO, Vincent Ramos, was then indicted by a grand jury along with his colleagues and would eventually plead guilty to a raft of charges related to drug trafficking. And with Phantom Secure gone, criminals were in search of a new encrypted messaging app. And that's where Operation Trojan Shield comes in. Now, at the beginning of the operation, the FBI recruited an unnamed confidential human source who had been developing a next generation secure messaging platform for the criminal underworld called Anon. Now, the app would only work on specially modified cell phones similar to those created by Phantom Secure. But what the users didn't know, the mystery developer had engineered Anom to secretly forward law enforcement a copy of every message that was sent on the platform. After Anom's launch in October 2019, the FBI convinced a few criminals to tell others about the phones. And soon enough, the app caught on like wildfire. In an 18 month period, law enforcement provided nearly 12,000 Anom phones through unsuspecting middlemen to more than 300 criminal syndicates in more than 100 countries. And many of the criminals assured each other that the app was incredibly safe. But rather than being safe, police in real time could read criminals discussing targeted hits, drug shipments, and other crimes, with users making no attempt to hide criminal plots with code words. And between October 2019 and June 2021, authorities collected more than 27 million messages in 45 languages. And armed with this treasure trove of incriminating data, the FBI and its 16 international partners carried out raids in their respective countries. In a 48 hour period, 9,000 officers deployed worldwide to make arrests and search more than 700 locations. According to the FBI, more than 32 tons of drugs were seized, killjoys, along with 250 firearms and $48 million in cash. And more than 50 secret drug labs were dismantled, including one of the largest clandestine labs in German history. In total, Operation Trojan Shield resulted in 800 arrests, including 500 in the 48 hour period. And then finally, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I'm gonna tell you this anyway. Don't live stream your crimes. Because many of the people on our list found themselves in legal trouble because they shared evidence of crimes after the fact. But in the case of Tim Gionette, better known as Baked Alaska, this famed online provocateur has built himself up quite a rap sheet by live streaming his crimes in real time. This idiot, Baked Alaska, is a far-right internet troll who openly aligned himself with the white nationalist Groyper movement, even appearing at the infamous 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. At the time, Mr. Alaska went viral for getting pepper sprayed while marching with a white supremacist in Charlottesville as he begged people around him to keep live streaming as he kneeled on the ground, milk dropping down from his face. I got f***ing peppers, I need milk! I need milk, I need milk! I need milk! Keep streaming! I got it. Keep streaming! I am, I got it, mate. Keep streaming me, someone. I'm, I'm streaming. So get someone to stream me. I got it, got I got it, it Bakes. Big Alaska's racist advocacy and promotion of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories caused him to be banned from a variety of platforms, including Twitter, YouTube, PayPal, and Uber. Now, despite this, Baked Alaska's live streaming antics only increased, and he often filmed himself conducting all manner of illegal things, but it reached an apotheosis on January 6, 2021, when, as you know, supporters of Donald Trump stormed the US Capitol in an effort to prevent the certification of Joe Biden's election. We're storming the Capitol, it's a revolution. And this is where Baked Alaska's live streaming caused himself and his allies the most legal trouble to date. On January 6th, Baked Alaska began his hour long live stream outside the US Capitol before eventually finding himself inside the building and interviewing participants. Yeah, we need to get our boy Donald J. Trump into office. Yeah, yeah, can we do that real quick? At one point, Baked Alaska turned to the camera to show his face. We are in the Capitol building, 1776 will commence again. And despite what looks like participation in the coup attempt, including shouting anti-Semitic and QAnon dog whistles while urging others to remain in the building, Baked Alaska told police officers that he was a member of the media. Court documents also state that Baked Alaska said on camera, occupy the Capitol, let's go. We ain't leaving this bitch. 
you know, just your regular everyday legitimate political discourse. Now, days after the video was posted, Baked Alaska was identified and arrested on multiple counts, including unlawful entry, violent entry, and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. But in a spectacular self-own for the far right, the FBI then used Baked Alaska's live stream to successfully arrest dozens of rioters captured on film, including Baked Alaska himself. takeaway here is if you're going to be a racist, treasonous, dirtbag troll who tries to overthrow the government, you should definitely live stream it. Your friends are going to love it. I need milk! I need milk! I need milk! milk! So the bottom line is you should never use your phone to document your crimes, but you should definitely use your phone to get delicious meals delivered straight to your door with today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a great way to eat delicious, fresh food while still being healthy. In fact, uh, HelloFresh has a whole variety of calorie smart, carb smart, pescatarian, and veggie options. You can customize it just how you like. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can savor all the fall flavors right from your home. Now, I'm a do-it-yourself person, and I have to say, I was initially pretty skeptical about HelloFresh. I'm a pretty good cook, so I didn't think that I needed the help, but I actually loved it. Even for an experienced cook, HelloFresh delivers new ingredients and recipes that I would never try on my own. HelloFresh generally keeps everyone's favorite meals and then rotates new ones in all the time. In fact, I usually increase the size of my HelloFresh serving so I can enjoy the leftovers for lunches. And of course, everything was delivered straight to my door so I didn't have to do any shopping. The produce actually gets to me faster than a grocery store so it arrives at peak freshness and flavor. And it's also super easy to save time. HelloFresh cuts out the meal planning and prep so that recipes take only only 20 to 30 minutes to cook. Literally less time to cook than it would normally take me to do the shopping itself. And it's also incredibly sustainable. Since the ingredients are pre-portioned, there's less prep and food waste. The packaging is almost entirely made from recyclable or already recycled content. And HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than those of meals made from store-bought groceries. And of course, it's 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant. So if you'd like to try HelloFresh, you can click on the link below or go to hellofresh.com and use the code LegalEagle65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Yes, you can actually get 65% off plus free shipping by clicking on the link that's on screen or down in the description. So go to hellofresh.com and use the code LegalEagle65 or just click on the link below. Plus clicking on that link really helps out this channel. After that, click on this playlist for more Legal Eagle or I'll see you in court.